Hi guys, Zenova here with another cold case for you. I have uh, blogged about this case recently and thought I would upload it and share it with you, my YouTube fans. Uh, one moment here while I get it pulled up on my phone. There you go. Um, I labeled this the Little Red Riding Hood murder um, because of this beautiful little redhead and the fact that she was coming home from her grandmother's house. So there was a lot of uh, parallels to the story. So that that is um, what I chose to title this. It's actually the story of Shirley Jane Rose. Um, and uh, it's a very, uh, a very sad case. Um, and I was going to share it with you today. But uh, for those of you that don't know who I am, I am Southwest Missouri's number one true crime writer. I uh, work as a victim's advocate with Missouri Missing Organization. I highlight obscure cold cases on my blog. Um, I try to work directly with the victim's family members because I, um, I feel like uh, sometimes they feel forgotten when the mainstream media has given up on their story. And so I try to do the cases that you may not hear of on, on regular news channels. So um, I, uh, I've gotten my potential viewership for this blog up to half a million. And I feel if we can keep pulling those numbers, we will start solving some of these cases. So afterwards, after the show, I ask you to please um, check out my blog, sign up for my newsletter, um, and uh, make sure and like and share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All that stuff really helps me. And uh, if you can help me, I can help more people, and, and that's my goal. So uh, let's get right into this case. It is uh, Shirley Jane Rose. She was a nine-year-old child. I will post a photo of her at the end of the video. Um, and this case happened nearly 44 years ago. It was October 17th, 1975. It was a Friday evening. Um, now, Shirley had lived in uh, this town of Springfield, Missouri. Now, at the time in 1975, especially in this area, it was considered a safe place. Um, and she only lived uh, like three or four blocks from her grandmother's house. So she would literally just walk to grandma's and walk back. Um, and there was never any issue. This was this was a, a, a small local community and within Springfield city limits, and um, it was uh, you know a safe place considered as such. So 1975, she was walking home from her grandmother's house, but what she didn't realize is while this was normally a safe area, she was spotted by a predator and. Um, this person, uh, some of the witnesses saw the child walking home, um, and they also saw at one point she was talking to a male in a blue car. Now, um, they describe this car, um, there's varying accounts. Of course, I'm not very good at telling you what the make and model of is of a car, so I, I don't find this unusual. Um, one said that it was either a 69 or a 70 Chevy. The other said it was a 72 Ford Torino. But neither one of these stories could be verified. And then another witness came forward saying that they saw her closer to her home. So it led investigators to wonder if this person drove off and then came back for her or if the timelines of the witnesses are a little skewed. So we are not sure in this case, um, the vehicle was never discovered um, and none of that could be verified for sure. So uh, the bad thing is, is um, even though despite a, um, a massive search from Springfield residents, uh, the child was not found. And two months later, uh, a, they found her in a shallow grave by McDaniel Lake. Now, um, this was, uh, if that's not a terrifying story for every parent, um, a strange twist happened. So it was in 1975 when this uh, little girl was abducted. In 1982, a judge came forward claiming that a client gave him some information on this case back when he was just an attorney. And and swore the judge to secrecy, swore the, the attorney at the time to secrecy until this person's demise. Now, this person was on his or her deathbed at the time and wanted this information to come out after they passed away. It is unclear if this person was actually the murderer 
I tend to think it was not because this person seemed to be afraid to uh, to give the actual name of the person that did this. It makes me think that it was someone that was afraid uh, for their life or the safety of their family. And so they wanted to make sure this came out, but they were afraid to do it while they were still around. So I'm not sure. Um, but this judge wrote an open letter to the local paper um, and described in detail how the child was stolen. Uh, the person, the perpetrator, uh, supposedly was wanting to trade her for drugs. Um, but then Springfield residents uh, banded together and created such a massive re uh, search effort just automatically. Um, these good-hearted people came together to try to help and it uh, it made the killer nervous and was afraid to get caught so he took this poor child out and dug her grave in front of her and told her it was for her and then killed her and left her there and so the judge in a fury threatened the killer with a gas chamber and said that he would be there to watch um, as the killer was strapped into into the into the chair now uh that's all dramatic and um i can understand the judge's um i can understand his his fury about this kind of thing um i you know as a parent i i would probably say that and maybe worse <laughs> but uh um it it didn't this public letter was created in hopes that someone would come forward. Now, I'm sure the killer probably wouldn't come forward, but someone that knew the killer would come forward. And unfortunately, that was 37 years ago, and nobody in the town of Springfield has came forward. And so I bring this case to you um, in hopes that you can spread it for me. And if we can get this case out and get enough people talking about it, perhaps we can pressure that one witness to come forward. Um, and then also a lot of times witnesses don't realize the little bit of information they know is important. So a lot of times it's not out of animosity that these people don't come forward. Uh, a lot of times uh, it's not even out of fear for their safeties. A lot of times they just know such a minute detail that they don't realize it's important. So uh, let's give that person, that one person that still lives in the area, let's give that one person um, the courage to come forward and uh, so share this for me please um, and then make sure you get on my Facebook page on my on my website sign up for my true crime uh, blog newsletter I, I get that out once a week um, and uh, maybe together we can reach a million people and uh, we can start solving some of these cases so thank you for your time and I'll see you online bye bye